Hey everyone, it's Blue Lizard Jello here, and welcome back to the final episode of Everything Possible in Dark Souls 2, or at least the final episode in New Game, but more on that later. So before we get started on the wrap-up of this series, we actually have another boss to kill. One that, I'll be honest, I put on the back burner earlier in the series and then completely forgot to come back. I did want to show you just how easy this boss can be later on, so here we go. What I have, I only have two spells equipped. I have Soul Appease for the Rat Minions, and then I have Climax to use on the actual Royal Rat Vanguard himself once he drops down. Now for those of you who don't know, which I'm sure you all do, you need to kill 10 of the minions in order for the boss to actually spawn. And once he does spawn, he will drop from the ceiling and he will be the rat with the mohawk, so you can tell him apart. However, if you hold this method, you probably won't have a hard time telling the boss apart because he'll likely be one of, if not the only, rat left in the room at the time. A little bit of trouble actually getting the solar piece off. Putting on a faster casting ring would have been helpful, but hindsight's 2020. But if you can get them all grouped together, solar piece is a pretty big area of effect spell. And that was enough to actually get the boss to spawn, so now I just have to wait for him to drop. Ignore this one other rat. Now more will spawn if we don't kill him quickly. But now that he's dropped. One shot of Climax, 1,410 damage later. It was probably more than that, but that's all the HP that he has. And down goes the Royal Rat Vanguard. We get his soul and a rat tail as a reward. Now, if you didn't do the Doors of Pharaohs first like we did, you could use this opportunity to join the Royal Rat Covenant or the Rat King Covenant. You can become a rat bro is what I'm trying to get at. We've already done that, so we have no need. So we'll just go ahead and hop down here, get this Ferris Lockstone that was teasing us earlier in the Grave of Saints. And then we're going to carefully hop down onto these coffins that are strategically placed all around the wall. Take a little bit of damage on this next fall. And this area should look familiar to you. This is where you enter the gutter. We entered from a much different route, but now we can grab this bleed stone. And just taking another look. On the left side is where the corpse held the disc chime, and in that chest we picked up the ash knuckle ring. But now it's time to face the last few bosses of the game. So here we are in Drang Lake Castle. We have the King Ring equipped so the door starts to open. And I mentioned this before, but once the door mechanism begins, you can remove the King Ring. So in this case, I am going to equip the Covetous Silver Serpent Ring plus one so I can get more souls from the end bosses. And if you're looking for your OMG no way moment, when you talk to Shalinette, as we learn her name is, she removes her hood. My name yeah, so that's actually what the back of her head looks like. Shocking, I know. The hair actually continues all the way back. I was just wow, you know? That's like Sixth Sense level of twists. But anyway, run down this unnecessarily long road down to the Throne of Want. And when you're running down ramps like this and you're not sprinting, you just look goofy. You kind of throw your head back, like you're trying to keep your balance, I guess, but... Maybe motion capture would be a good idea for the next game. Still running. Sometimes I actually pop green blossoms here just so I can sprint for longer. We have two summon signs. You can summon the head of Vengarl, and you can summon Benhard of Jugo. We are not going to summon the head of Vengarl, because we actually want someone who's useful in the fight. So we'll grab Benhard. Wait for him to spawn, and then we'll take on the Throne Defender and Watcher. It's always good to see Ben Hart. Make sure everything's equipped properly, and it is, so let's begin. Let me tell you, with the Dragon Chime and Great Lightning Spear, these fights are kind of a joke, as most fights are. You can see just the massive damage that they're taking. And for some reason, Benhard draws aggro like an absolute pro in this fight. If you summon Vengarl, the enemies seem to focus a lot more on you. Now, I don't have any proof of that. I don't have anywhere written down where it says that. However, that is my experience so far. If you guys have noticed that, or if you've noticed the contrary, let me know. So typically, the strategy, or the best strategy for this fight, is to whittle down both of the boss's health, because as I'm sure you're already aware, if you take too long to kill the second, they will revive the first. 
when you have Great Lightning Spear and you're at the level we're at, you really don't have to be worried about that. So we get both of their souls, and now as we approach the Throne of Want, or as we re-approach it, sometimes you need to double back. And now we fight Nishandra. Pitiful, pitiful Queen Nishandra. Now I'm going to start off by casting the Whisper of Despair so her physical defenses are reduced. That way Benhart can feel like he's contributing. And I'm going to use our Trusted Pickaxe to whittle the boss down a bit using Crystal Magic Weapon. You can see the damage is not too bad. I like the pickaxe. The tracking is terrible, but what a fun weapon. Benhart unfortunately does not last long because he doesn't understand the concept of curses. Not to mention when she uses her Wrath of God type hex. It's over. But speaking of over, now that we don't have a tank for us, we are just going to use Great Lightning Spear. And we can put this beautiful, stunning queen to rest. Now you can roll under that beam. It's difficult. You have to time it well, but you can. And that's Nishandra. And that's Dark Souls 2. We do have a little bit left to take care of once we get into Majula. But that is essentially everything possible in Dark Souls, or at least in New Game. So if you wouldn't mind now sitting through the hour and a half long credits, we'll meet back in Majula. I'm completely kidding. I don't sit through the credits and nor do I expect you to. So here we are back in Majula wearing our beautiful singer's dress. We have the king's crown on and now we have a couple of things to take care of. Now we're going to go talk to Kale to get his equipment. However, if you go and you visit Sweet Shalquar after you've defeated the Royal Rat Vanguard and Authority, you can then buy the Flying Feline Boots from her, which is another piece of equipment that further reduces your fall damage. But once you've killed Nishandra and you've killed all the other main bosses, and you've lit all eight flames on the map, talking to Kale will actually give you his helm, his leather armor, and his shoes. What we're interested in is the helm. And the reason is, if you remember the assassination quest from Navalon the Sorcerer, he wants Kale's helmet. So now that we have that, we can go back, we can trade in the helmet, and we can trade in the Aged Feather, and we can finish that quest line. Now when I say trade in, you don't actually give him the item. So if you're looking to hold on to something like the Sunset Staff or the Aged Feather, don't worry about it because they don't actually get removed from your inventory. And I wanted to show you here too, once you've killed Nishandra, Titanite Chunks are sold no in unlimited quantities you, by Cloan. So something you're probably going to want to stock up on before you enter into New Game Plus. But for now, let's head over to Aldia's Keep. And through the magic of editing, I'm now dead. Or at least hollow. Remember, if you want to talk to Navlon, you have to be in hollow form. Well, you'll, he'll talk to you in human form, but he's useless and he tells you to go away. Aldia's Keep has this really nice facade, this really beautiful kind of immediate interior and even the exterior, and then you go deeper and it just becomes this horrible freak show. This is my... So here we have Simpleton Spice, now let's... and that would I be for turning in Kale's helmet. As proof, or do you... And I say no like a fool, but now he's asking for the Sunset Staff from Falcon, which we already got from Falcon, and we got one right outside the... This is my... And with that, we get the now, Forbidden Sun Pyromancy, which is a long-range, massive explosion pyromancy, which does a lot of damage. Now go and now he wants the feather. Yes, God. Or at least proof you that we got the feather. We got Unleashed Magic, and require? this sorcery you gives you 20% increased magic, and that sorcery, miracle, hexes, and pyromancies at a cost of 30% of your HP. Specs. Once you've completed the quest and you talk to him, then you can pick up the Chaos Set, and the hood gives you a plus three intelligence boost, and it does increase your casting speed. And with his quest line done, we now have access to his inventory. Two pieces of equipment of note. The moon hat, which increases your intelligence by two. And the black witch's hat, which gives you an extra well, attunement slot. As you wish. And with all that said and done, it's time for one last trip back to Majula. So here we are about to wrap up our adventure in New Game. 
I want to take this time to thank everyone who's come out to watch the videos, everyone who's liked the videos, comments on the videos, send me private messages. Thank you so much. I hope you learned something in the series. If you did, let me know what you learned. If I missed something, let me know. Stay tuned. We do have a new series coming up, and there will be some streams coming up as well. Take care, guys.